how are you? Welcome to my channel. Today we are finally doing my January reading wrap up. I know it's late. <laughs> I've had so much going on and just so many things I wanted to show y'all before I got to it, but I'm finally doing it better late than never, right? <laughs> so part of the reason why I haven't done this one and I haven't been that motivated to do it is because I've already kind of talked about some of these. <laughs> But January was actually a really good reading month. Not because I read a lot of books, but because the quality of books that I read was really great. I read seven books. Out of those seven, five of them were five-star reads. I don't think I have ever had a month where I had five five-star reads. That is incredible. <laughs> Two of them were four-star reads. So this may be the best month I've ever had. I've had months where I've read, you know, a lot more books. Yeah, I think the most books I've ever read in a month was maybe 12 because all I read are physical books. I don't do audiobooks. Um, I don't do Kindle books usually. Every now and then I do. And that's not because I have a problem with it. It's just my focus. I've tried to read audiobooks. My brain cannot grasp them <laughs> for whatever reason. I can't focus on them. I'm, my brain will just wander every single time. I don't know why it is. It, it doesn't matter if all I'm doing is focusing on audiobook or if I'm trying to do something else like um, I know some people do diamond paintings while they're doing audiobooks or whatever. I can't do it. I don't know why. So all I read are physical books. So I've had months where I've read 10, 12 books and I've had months where I read two. But this is the best book I've had as far as quality of books. It's been amazing. January was great. So seven books, five five-star reads just incredible. So we'll talk about them. I'm really excited to show y'all anyways, even though it's super late. <laughs> but um, yeah, I got a new shirt. My mom got it for me. So we got Chucky and Tiffany. I love it. I'm working on, you'll probably notice I wear the same stuff all the time. And that's because I don't have a lot of casual clothes. I was in, you know, the business world for ever. And I don't go out of the house a lot, so I didn't have a lot of casual clothes. All I had were just business stuff. And right now I'm at a weird place where I've lost weight, so nothing fits. <laughs> Which I guess is a good thing, but just nothing fits me. And so I don't have a lot of clothes. I, I don't have a lot of things to wear, so I wear the same things all the time. But mom, my mom got this for me, so she surprised me with it. So I love it. So you'll be seeing this a little bit. She got me another one too. It's long sleeve. I'm not wearing it today because it's really hot here. So... I'm in Texas. It's in the 70s. To me, that's really hot. I'm not happy unless it's like 50s or under. It's freaking hot here. Love the shirt. It actually fits me really well. So I'm happy with it. Let's get into the books. Maybe we'll start with horror and then work our way to non-horror. How about that? I finally got to Misery by Stephen King. I got a really kind of a roughed up, <laughs> it's kind of a roughed up copy. Um, but I found this at a thrift store years ago. Um, so I don't mind that it's a little roughed up. I think I've got it for like a dollar. <laughs> like a Goodwill or something. Anyways, this was my first five star of January. Honestly, it was it started out as a four star for me until it got to the end. I haven't seen the movie still. I was going to wait until I could do like a compare between the book and the movie. But I have not had time to watch the movie yet. But Paul is a writer and he's in a pretty horrific car accident uh, it's snowy and he's in a car accident that really messes him up like he's got busted legs his knees his pelvis is shattered like he's really messed up and unfortunately for him the person that finds him in the wreckage is annie who is his number one fan so Annie used to be a nurse and she pulls him from the wreckage and drags him to her house. So he wakes up at her house all broken up and she's kind of nursing him and he quickly realizes that he's not in the best position here. Like she's batshit crazy. So she's got all the pain pills. She's got all the drugs that he could possibly want or not want. And he is just not in a good position. So <sighs> it keeps, it like progressively gets worse, you know. 
she kind of mentions like, oh, I've been waiting for your newest book to come out because he has this series. Um, I think it's like romance or something, but he has a series featuring Misery, who is Annie's favorite character. And she's been waiting and waiting for this latest book to come out. And she's like, oh, I've been waiting for the newest book. She has no idea that he's killed off her favorite character. And so the new book comes out while he's in her care. And she gets the book and she realizes that he's killed her favorite character off. And she gets pissed. And so she basically is like, guess what? You're not leaving here until you, you know, bring her back. So, yeah, Paul's not in the best situation here. Uh, it's wintry. It's snowy. They're in a secluded cabin. <laughs> she does some really not nice things to him. Uh, there's torture. There's gore. What amazes me is the fact that Paul, like, you get his wit and his uh, sense of humor behind, you know, his thoughts. And the fact that he was able to keep his sense of humor about him throughout this whole ordeal was amazing to me. Like, I don't know how he did it. I don't know how he didn't, like, completely lose it throughout the whole thing. Ending was amazing. I won't say anything about it aside from just that it took it from a four star to a five star for me. I loved it. The way pain was described in this, only Stephen King can do that. I haven't seen anybody else be able to do that. Like, it puts you right there in Paul's head and in his situation. And it's amazing. Like, it's just, I don't even know how to describe it. But just, it puts you right there in his situation. And you really feel for him. And just, you want him to get out so bad. It's gruesome. Like, yeah, amazing. Uh, I love Stephen King's earlier works. I've said it a mil million times. I do not care for his, this may be an unpopular opinion. I don't know. And I'm not saying anything bad about Stephen King. I, I love Stephen King. But his later works are not my favorite. They're a little too rambly. I love his earlier works. Yeah, that's how my January started. This was in my cozy reading vlog. I won't get too much into it. Wolf Hunt, Jeff Strand. Comedic horror. These two thugs are hired to transport a werewolf uh, across Florida. Things go very, very wrong when the werewolf escapes. So they're trying to capture him before he harms or kills anybody. The werewolf is a smart ass. There's plenty of banter. It's gory. It's messy. It's just everything you would want in a Jeff Strand book as far as humor goes. It was great. No one is safe in this book. Just know that going into it. It's hilarious. There are a lot of places in this that made me laugh out loud and it was great. It, this was another five star. It did everything it set out to do. It kept me entertained throughout the whole thing. I loved the dialogue in this. If you love comedic horror, I think you would love this. I went into more detail as I was reading this in my cozy reading vlog and it'll be linked down below. The Devil's League. This was sent to me by the author Jake Kamara. Um, this was a four star. It is a book of short stories but they're linked together and it is about monsters. This Waylon Ross is a monster collector. There are some stories that follow him and his like dungeon or basement in his house like he has a mansion and he goes all over the world collecting different monsters like they're endangered monsters. This was in my cozy reading vlog too so it goes more into depth so I won't go too far into it in this. Um, there's some you've heard of vampires, werewolves, witches, that sort of thing. Then there are some that you haven't heard of. Like there's a scorpion man, things like that. Um, and then there's some chapters on the actual monsters and how they got into their situations and their backstories. There are man-made monsters here. There are, you know, all different kinds. So yeah, it's, it does have that lesson of who's the real monster. Um, cause you know, there's that whole humans instinct or their first gut reaction to hunt or to cage the monsters you know just because they're different so there's that whole lesson too but i loved it and i gave it four stars this is another one from my cozy reading vlog ling hoon by ai Zhang. this is i would call it grief horror but it wasn't really scary it was more weird and ominous Followed a family when she, she's a teenager. Her, her mom, and her dad have moved into this weird little community. When you get into a house in this community, you're able to bring back your dead loved one. So they've lost her brother like 
quite a while before this. Like I want to say, I don't remember like years before this. And her mom especially has had a really hard time with grief and moving on. She's living in the past. Her brother was definitely her favorite, I think. Like I would I would call him the the golden child, the favorite, the only boy, you know, and the first child and all that. So um he very much it was the priority and still is even in death. And when she has always taken the back burner. So there's a lot of resentment. This book deals a lot with death and pretty much this whole community is having a hard time moving on from their dead loved ones. They're living in the past. So no one in this town is really living at all. You know, it's it's really sad. And the links people will go to to get into these houses to see their dead loved ones. Um, It's really pretty. It's really beautifully written. It's short. It's a novella. It is gorgeous. It's very unique. It's a very unique premise. And I was really surprised by it. Um, I d didn't know much about it going into it, but I was very surprised and I didn't I didn't really know what to expect but it follows several people there are chapters on Winchie there are chapters on Liam which is another teenager his family is just kind of camped out on a lawn waiting for a house to come available and they've been camped out there for like three years and then there's there are chapters on Mrs who is an elderly lady in a house that has been waiting for her her husband to come back and there are all these rumors about her and how come her husband never came back. The grief is very much felt, like you can feel it. I would highly recommend it. This was another five star. If you want to hear more about it, definitely watch the video that's linked down below. We have A Dowry of Blood. This one's more flowery and pretty. This one I put, if you missed my Valentine one, which I did I think last week, I'll link it down below as well. Um, it's written like a letter form. From Constanta to Dracula. It spans centuries. And Dracula is this very powerful, very manipulative, controlling being. And Constanta has written a letter to him. But it's like a poly relationship because it's him with Constanta and he's brought in two other people to this relationship. So, yeah. But it's like this power dynamic, there's manipulation. It's really gorgeous. The writing is really gorgeous. It's immersive. It's seductive. It like has a way of just pulling you in. It's just gorgeous. Like that's the only way I can explain it. He kind of keeps her and these other two under lock and key. Like he very much um, has full control of their situation. They're, they're not allowed to have outside relationships. Just nar narcissistic and yeah. But the writing style on this is just stunning. This is another five star and I ate it up. I could not stop reading it. And I think I read it in maybe one or two sittings <laughs> because I just could not put it down. It was gorgeous. But yeah, definitely if you didn't watch my Valentine video, definitely watch it because it was all about toxic relationships. <laughs> and this was definitely toxic. The last two are not horror. We have more of a cozy mystery. Classic Agatha Christie, Midwinter Murder. This was a gift from one of my friends on Instagram. Um, this is actually a collection of short stories that are all centered around winter. And it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. I love Agatha Christie books because I love to try to solve the mystery myself as I go along. And I just had a really good time with this. It was cozy. Which, after some of the books I read in January, I needed something cozy. <laughs> So this was one of those I just bundled up and I had my hot chocolate and just enjoyed. The murders in this were all very unique, I thought, which was a lot of fun. And I don't, I think maybe I was able to only solve one of these. And I love that. I love that I wasn't able to figure it out. And that's what I look for. I look for something that I can't just automatically figure out. So 
lots of fun. Had a great time. Get, I think I gave this one four stars. Just, uh, and you know, the cover was really cute too. That purple, blue, and white, I thought was really pretty. So, just really cozy, fun, good time. Can't go wrong with Agatha Christie. Okay, the last one. I don't know how well you can see this. And this, I love the simplicity of this cover. This one is Ice Fields by Thomas Wharton. I really don't know what this is classified as genre-wise. This doctor, Dr. Edward, Edward Byrne, is on this glacier one day and he slips on ice and he falls into the glacier. While he is upside down in this glacier, he sees something in the ice that he becomes obsessed with. He continuously studies the ice after that. Um, and that's what this book is about, the glacier. So I'll read you this little passage. He stared straight ahead and realized he could see quite far into the ice. It was almost free of impurities, like a wall of furrowed, tinted glass. He squinted. There was something in the ice, a shape, its outline sharpening as the light grew. A fused mass of trapped air bubbles or a vein of snow had formed a chance design, a white form embedded within the darker ice and revealed by the light of the sun, a pale human figure with wings. So he sees this like winged figure in the ice while he's upside down. And this becomes his obsession. It takes place over 25 years as he is kind of obsessing over this glacier. Normally books are either plot driven or character driven. I don't feel like this is either one, which is weird, but, or maybe sounds weird. I feel like this is all about the setting. Like, and that's what I was drawn into. I'm really surprised how much I liked this. And I know on Goodreads, a lot of people didn't. They, they were like, this is so boring. This is so slow. They couldn't get into it. But I was just mesmerized by this. The way the ice was described, the way the glacier was described, I just couldn't look away from it. It made me want to go and get a freaking parka and go on an adventure. <laughs> I was mesmerized by the ice. I wanted, I wanted to go and explore this for myself. It was just gorgeous. Like it was beautiful the way it was described. And I'll read you a couple passages here in a minute, but it was so pretty. And there were other themes. You do get to know the characters a little bit. There are characters in it and you do get to know them. So it wasn't just ice. That's not all it was. You do get to know a little bit of the characters. And there were other th themes besides just ice. It's about solitude, soul searching, obsession, life, death, um, time. It's about like how you can go in and explore the glacier. You can come back years later and nothing's going to be the same because the glaciers are always moving. It might be slow, but they are always moving and changing and you can come back and nothing's going to be the way you left it. There was a lot of contrast between fire and ice. So there were a lot of references to that too. Love and death, movement, um, like I said, the changes um, because of the, the glacier always moving and time and how time changes, how time changes things. So it wasn't just the ice, <laughs> but it was so very descriptive. I can see it not being for everybody because it is slower. And if you are somebody that needs a big plot, you probably wouldn't like it. You know, if you, you're somebody that needs you, a purpose, you need the book to have somewhere that it's going, you probably won't like it. Let me see if I can find a couple passages to read to you. I thought this was pretty too. This is more of the love thing, not the, um, not the glacier thing. Um, I just want to look at you tonight. Look at your feet. Every part of you is so charming. I can't think of a better word for it. Maybe it's not just the meaning. It's the letters too. The letters of the word charming. In bold face at least? No, italic. Glacial ice is not a liquid, nor is it a solid. It flows like lava, like melting wax, like honey. Supple glass, fluid stone. To watch it flow, one must be patient. 
there are few changes that can be seen in the course of one day, but over time, crevices split open and others close. This is pretty too. Yes, but she was not ordinary. That's just it. Years later, I thought, she didn't have to be a spirit, a fairy, anything like that. She didn't have to be from another world to fill mine with magic. I'd never seen anyone, anything like her. A beautiful girl under a hawthorn. That's enough of a wonder, isn't it? Isn't that pretty? For a moment, he could not believe in these hard, unfathomable masses of rock. They seemed to hang suspended in the sky. A quick, cold breath might shatter them like an illusion of ice crystals and light. Squinting, he picked out the crevices and ice falls of Actress Glacier. From this distance, they seemed only delicate, spidery wrinkles in pale blue silk. Above them gleamed the white rim of the neve where the glacier spilled from a gap between the flanking peaks, a slender curve of burning snow. This was a five star. Like I said, I'm very, I was very surprised how much I liked it. it I'm really confused about how to explain it. <laughs> like I said, it wouldn't be for everybody. Um, I wouldn't recommend it to everybody. Definitely. It's one of those that if you like plot or character-driven books, this would not be for you. But I'm one of those weirdos that actually really loved it. That was it. That was my January wrap-up. <laughs> Sorry I kept you waiting so long. Can't believe I had five five-star reads like that. Who knew? I don't know that February is going to end up being that way. February has been kind of weird. I don't even know how many books I've read for February, honestly. I haven't even looked to see what I've done in February. It's been so crazy. Anyways, uh, that was January. I have a book shopping video coming up that I'm excited to show y'all. Um, I found some really cool stuff, actually. I'm going to show y'all. I don't know if that's going to be next week or the week after because I actually got tagged in... I actually got tagged in something. So, my first book tag that I was tagged in. So, that's cool. I'm excited about that. That might be next week. Um, actually, I'll be putting that together really soon. Looking for that and a book shopping video. I'll see you next Friday. Bye for now.